Hello and welcome to Freedom Watch, your daily dose of raw liberty online at foxnews.com. I'm Judge Andrew Napolitano here, defending freedom, defending your natural rights, and defending your right to have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution. On the last leg of a South American fact-finding mission last month, my next guest, Trends Institute Director Gerald Salenti and his colleague were in Santiago, Chile, when the unbelievable happened. Shortly after 3 o'clock in the morning, a massive 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Chile. The five-star hotel Jerry was in began to shake and rattle with the force that only a quake of that size can create. From the 14th floor, Jerry and his colleague immediately ran down the staircase and astonishingly made it down 14 flights without any injury. Both are black belts, and they credit their survival to decades of physical and psychological training. This training, called neo survivalism, is one of the top trends that Jerry forecasts and discusses at the Trends Research Institute. It is always my pleasure to welcome back to the show the ultimate survivor and director of the Trends Research Institute, Jerry Salenti. Jerry, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Hey, thanks, Judge. So before we talk about the uh, current state of affairs in America from an economic point of view and your prediction for the near-term and long-term future. What happened in Chile? What happened to you? Well, well, the interesting things were actually dogs woke us up. Santiago's filled with dogs sleeping all over the sidewalk, stretched out every day, no matter where you walk. And about 3 o'clock in the morning, we were awakened by dogs. Windows were closed 14 stories up. And it was a wake-up call. There was a tremor. Immediately following the tremor, I knew Chile's an earthquake zone. You know, I was partially dressed and out. The, the important things to understand were we went down 14 flights of stairs, Judge. No one in front of us. Most people panicked. I interviewed people the next day. The building didn't come down. But if you look at yesterday's New York Times, you'll see that in Santiago, the building suffered serious internal and structural damage. All right. What is neo-survivalism? So what the people and, did, Judge, is they called the front desk asking uh, for advice. Uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. waited for tour operators. They hid in bathtubs. They went under their desks. Well, people were afraid to think for themselves. All right. Well, neo-survivalism well, means that in these times of whether it's economic peril, whether it's going to be terrorism, Whatever it is, have a plan. What finally got us out of there was our network from attackproof.com. We sent out an SOS that we were stuck there, and worldwide we were getting information. And we finally got information that said, you know, rent a car, get a car, drive to Mendoza, Argentina, fly from there to Buenos Aires, etc. So in these times, people need to think for themselves. They need a network of like-minded people and they need to plan ahead. All right. Your, your neo-survivalism skills and your internet network arguably saved your life in this earthquake in Chile. Now take this neo-survivalism, uh, uh, of which you are an expert proponent, and translate it into economic forecasting for me. It is a foregone conclusion, I think. Even the biggest of big government types must concede that the federal government of the United States of America is broke, and there is no hope unless there's a radical change in its policy for that to change. Well, you're right on target. We're in debt $40,000 a person. It'll never be paid off. So where's neo-survivalism at the basic level? You know, pick up, a, pick up an article today, uh, the, the, the magazine Martha Stewart Live, or whatever the name of the Martha Stewart's magazine, and, and in it, there's a story about local butchers. Well, one's right around the corner from us, Leishers, up here in uptown Kingston, New York. Neo-survivalism, supporting your neighbors, being in tune with the community, helping each other out during these difficult economic times. You know, Judge, I believe in the golden rule. Those who have the gold rule. And right now, China has most of the gold. So All right. China has most of the gold, and China is, is the world's banker. A couple of specific questions for you. Will a time come when China stops being 
America's banker? Will a time come when China demands interest rates that we don't want to pay? Will a time come when China demands security, like a mortgage on Yellowstone National Park, for example, before it continues to fork over cash? The time is now. The time is happening. We're in a lull period. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about neo-survivalism. Make plans now. The crash of 2010 is about to happen. Whether it's the calamity going on in Greece, you know, every day they're coming up with a, another non-solution, pretending that they have one at hand, or whether it's China unwinding its position out of U.S. Treasuries. It's going to happen. It is happening. The nation is going broke. I want everyone who is listening to us now to recognize and realize to whom we are listening. Jerry Salenti is one of the few people on the planet who predicted with uncanny accuracy and precision exactly what would happen to the United States economy in the fall of 2008. And now we hear prediction of what happening when, Jerry. It's underway now. The timing is very difficult because these, these things are so manipulated, whether it's high-frequency trading, black pools, made-offs or rip-offs. We know that there's a lot of behind-the-scenes manipulation going on. They want to make it appear that things are calm and everything's under control. It's not under control. It's the stimulus money pouring out of China, the stimulus money coming out of India, the stimulus out of Japan, South Korea, U.S., U.K., Australia. The stimulus is drying up. The crash is about to happen. All right. It's obvious that the government won't wake up. It's obvious that people like you, as accurate as you've been and as compelling as you've been, and those of us here in the media who have a loud megaphone that have been causing voices like yours to be heard all over the place is not resonating with this big government style of government that we have. What can individuals do to prepare for the crash that you say is now imminent? Well, one thing is don't go a penny more into debt. Take, take seriously that thing they used to call Yankee frugality. Wear it up, use it out, make it do, do it out. And support your local community. Buy everything you can to keep the cash locally. It can't keep going overseas and having a high standard of living. They don't work together. The other things, only speaking for myself, not financial advice to anybody, only for me, I keep buying gold. I don't believe in the digital money with the paper it's not printed on. And as we're seeing what's going on in Europe and all of the currencies, to me, it's always good as gold. Is there anything we can do to wake up the government? Would, would you your know, I voice... I see these movements happening. Today we got swarmed with this Swarm USA kind of thing about readjusting the Federal Reserve, doing away with it, and bringing the power back to Congress. It's the tea parties. It's people like yourself. You know what it is, Judge? We're old enough to remember in our generation when there was dignity among people. People had self-respect. And that's what people have to start ga gaining back. Don't follow your leaders. People that follow their leaders wait until it's too late to take action. So, yeah, it's a time to become active. It can be turned around. It is being turned around. Jerry Salenti, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Hey, thank you, Judge.